Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. Welcome to another week of our podcast. John Radigan here, Nate Newton there. And if you're new to the show, I want you to know we're going to have fun. We're going to talk lots of football, maybe some other sports along the way, too. But listen, when you really need to perk your ears up (laughs) is when Nate looks at the camera and says... Let me tell you something, man. This is a sports deal brought on to you by Niagara. Hey, let them yeah, flush man. you away with great plumbing. <laughs> and when Nate says, let me tell you something, yes. that's when you just, man, you perk your ears up and you listen because that's when the stuff gets really good. So yeah. let me tell you something. That's the key phrase, Nate. That's the key phrase. That's yes, the show. Is. Yeah, it gets me excited, Ray. Good to see you this morning, man. You're looking perky. You You're looking right, man. You, you have pretty tight, too. I ain't saying it's better than Jimmy, Coach Johnson, but you close. That's what you said to me on the plane one time. You're walking down the plane, the, uh, the uh, charter, and you're kind of giving everybody on the, in the media row, you know, a little bit of your, your wit and, and, right. and sarcasm and humor. And you look at me and you go. You got hair like Coach Johnson. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know what? I said, man, that's not such a bad thing. It's like oh, my no. first year with the Cowboys. I'm cover- I'm cowering. Here comes this big <laughs> offensive lineman, and he noticed me. I'm like, oh, don't notice me. Don't notice me. You got hair like Coach Johnson. I'm like, well, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, you know? wow. No, hey, hey, man. Hey, the days, back in the days, used to have fun, man. And guess what? Them days are coming back around with the Eagles and the Cowboys, man. And I'm just excited to talk about it, man. Is it something specific you want to get into about these Eagles and Cowboys? We're not going to talk long. We're just going to try to give you the pertinent stuff that counts. Yeah, there's a few things we we need to delve into here, Nate. And the first okay. one is, of course, Jalen Hurts. Okay, yeah. so you know there were outlandish, ridiculous comments from us uh, from someone as as learned, right, and as experienced as David Carr out there uh, this week saying they should not start. Jalen Hurts, they should bench him. And again, I get it. It's to uh, you know preserve his health, to get him healthy. Uh, your thoughts on him taking the field, whatever state he's in, as long as he's able. The thing about a top-notch quarterback that is a competitor and has been one uh, ever since you, we followed this kid from high school into Alabama, over to Oklahoma, into uh, Eagles territory. This kid has always been a competitor. He's always been an upright guy. He's always given his team all he had to give. As long as he's medically cleared and physically able and not going to damage that knee or any other parts of his body any worse by playing, this kid going to play. So when I hear ex-players, I don't hold normal media or normal fans under these expectations, but when I hear other players who have played the game who understands the game and the competition and the desire that's uh, built within you. To see, when they make comments like that, I just be like, well, what are you trying to get? Likes, clicks? What, yep. what, why are you saying this? Are that's you it. genuinely concerned? Because if you are, you know there's better ways to say things that uh, we say sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. You learn that certainly even as you're playing, you learn how to say things without saying anything and those right. type of, those type of things. So, uh, so, does his mobility, does his ability, because of the injury, give even a stronger advantage to the Cowboys? Right now, they're rated as three and a half point favorites, which is basically just a home field advantage nod from Vegas. But does Jalen Hurts' questionable health give the Cowboys an advantage, Nate? If Jalen cannot move, because I look at him and Dak is similar. I think he's a little bit better because he's been to a Super Bowl, and I give the nod always to the accomplished. 
uh, they are both the same guys. As long as they can move around and have the threat of the run, their passing is so much more effective. And if we know that he's going to be three step, four, five step, seven step in that area, in that tackle box, we can get after him. We can make some things happen. We can blitz him. Uh, we can uh, we can uh, bring Micah from different positions. We can bring other guys, Fowler from different positions, Sam Williams from different positions. Now they become almost one dimensional because we know they're going to run. If we stop that, then we know where he's going to be when they defensive coordinator of the ilk of uh, 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 that what we have know where you're going to be 80% of the time 85% of the time that is just an all out uh, assault on this kid all right did did the Cowboys already lose us one to the Eagles this week in that Shaq Leonard decided to sign with the Eagles and it was basically down to the Cowboys and Eagles for for this guy who's had a real uh, a real stellar career thus far you remember back in the 90s, the early, early 2000s, we never lost a free agent deal. Yeah. Whether it was Dion, whether it was yeah. Charles Haley, whether it was uh, Frank Cornish, uh, whoever we needed to help us win, to help us have an edge within our, especially within our division, our conference, we never lost. When is the last time we've won? And especially when it's down to us in the Eagles, uh, us in the 49ers, uh, us now in Detroit. When have we won with a free agent deal? We need experience at the linebacker position. Uh, we have not in a big game shown yet that we can just consistently stop the run. Uh, I believe that the two guys that have had uh, – the young guy, uh, Marquise Bell and Clark, have done an admirable job. But these are not big body bangers, mm -hmm. guys that can get in the muck and root hog and die. You know, if the, if, if the 49ers or Detroit or the Philadelphia Eagles, which we'll be playing this week, decide that, hey, look at little number 14. Let's test this metal. He can't stand up up under that pressure. Not a constant barrage. I mean, I remember the movie uh, Fury with Brad Pitt. You know, uh, <laughs> where they had armored tanks. When they went into a city, when they was about two or three hundred yards out, they just start sending bombs in. And after about five minutes, the city being rubbles. I mean, the guys had the machine guns a hundred yards away. Da, 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 and all of a sudden, you hear boom, a constant yeah. barrage, baby. Wrecks all. And I don't think Clark and my boy can stand up under that right there. Okay, so uh, Jerry said on his radio show this week, Mr. Jones, and I know you guys uh, as former players appreciate him so much, but he said, you know, we never talked financials. Would this have been one where you, if you're Jerry, say it doesn't matter how much Philadelphia offers, because he knew he was only stopping at two places, right? right? It doesn't matter how much Philadelphia offers. We will offer more. Is that is that um, not fair in this game? It seems like it, it, because of what you're saying, and I agree, the Cowboys should have done even more to try and land this guy. If he passed the physical and he, you deemed him that he could play, we need help at linebacker. Uh, everything should have been discussed. Financials. You know, I know uh, Coach Quinn told him how, where he would fit and how much he would play if he would play at all early in, uh, in the next two or three weeks. Because if he's not going to play within the next two or three weeks, why do you have him? Mm -hmm. Because if you got him for a security blanket, he could have stayed with the Colts. They still owe him over $20 million. So uh, not to have discussed that is just hard for me. To, to believe that, uh, and that's probably why Mr. Jones let him leave because uh, they, they did not discuss uh, financials. He didn't need us as leverage. A lot of people say, "Oh, he needed the Cowboys as leverage." He da 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 da. He has a relationship with Coach Sirianni. He don't. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah. Uh, this kid wanted to be courted. He wanted to feel good. It's been a while since uh, he's had his ego stroke. Uh, the Cowboys helped do that. Uh, 
this kid did not leave the Colts because they weren't paying him a lot of money. He left the Colts right. because he wasn't playing. What was the All Cowboys offer in playing? Let's see what the Eagles offer him in playing. Uh, the Eagles get one yeah. of the starting linebackers back this week, so we'll see. Uh, if uh, yeah, and in many ways, yeah. especially after that 49ers game, where you know they were demoralized, the Eagles almost as much as the Cowboys were by the 49ers. Um, it, it appears that Philadelphia certainly could use him more, uh, you know, in no, their no, defense, no, in their defensive no, scheme. No. Five weeks so? ago, we would have saw the 49ers games, and we would have say, it appears that we can use him more. Yeah, the, one no thing that the, the one thing that the 49ers have that the Eagles and Cowboys don't have, and listen to me closely, Rad, let me tell you something, and all of the there listeners – yeah. When the thing that the 49ers have that the Cowboys or the Eagles sorely lack is linebackers that can tackle versus the run and linebackers that can cover. We don't have both. We have packages that we can send in, but we don't have that ward or that green that can stay in the game and just say, hey, OK, now I'm a, now I'm a nickel. I'm a nickel safety. These guys are just that good. So when you get ready to run the ball on third and five, when you think you're going to pass, oh, look at that little old linebacker now. Oh, man, he's number uh, six foot, 200 pounds. We're going to run on him, but you can't do that against the 49ers. You gotcha. can't do that against Greenlaw. You can't do that against Ward. These guys coming down here at 230, 240, breaking backs. You know, they almost broke uh, – Jalen Hurts, that's why we're talking about Jalen Hurts, because he yeah. went open, open field, a great open field tackler. That is what the Cowboys are missing, that great open field tackler, that big guy that can come downhill and bang with the guards and centers. That is why the 49ers have that slight edge. The Philadelphia Eagles got a good enough defensive line, but they don't have the linebackers. So now it affects the back end coverage altogether. The Cowboys have pretty decent coverage at linebackers, but we can't stop the run, not against the big boys consistently, but the 49ers can. They don't have to change a thing. They can play man coverage with their safeties and corners, or they can play zone with their corners and safeties because those two linebackers they have, that is the key to why they got the slight edge. They can make adjustments and never lose their leader in Ward. He ain't never coming off the field. So mm -hmm. uh, that's one big thing that people better understand is how big linebacker players and how most teams that don't have those great linebackers uh, hurt themselves in big games. All right, so when the Cowboys lost, as you mentioned, four, five, six weeks ago, whatever it was, when they lost to the 49ers, uh, we were concerned at the time, rightly, yes. uh, that the next week they would basically lose two games to the 49ers, that they would be so beat up that they wouldn't be ready to go the following week. Yes. Thankfully, they did fine. You know, they got through. They beat the they beat the Chargers that week, and, right. and that was a good victory and a nice bounce back. Can we expect hope you know wonder if the eagles will have the uh the the you know stuffing knocked out of them so badly that this could be that effect on them that the cowboys they might not be ready because they got so beat up last week john i am so glad you asked that question <laughs> i want you to go back in your memory banks when the dallas cowboys would play the eagles then they would come back the next week and play Green Bay. And they would come back the next week and play the 49ers. And we were playing physical, bruising football. Did it ever matter then? It is the NFC East game. It is in the NFC conference. Did it matter then? It didn't matter then, and it won't matter now. What you are hoping is that Philadelphia got beat up, but do you really think you have a chance? Stay with me here. Stay with me here. This is another one. That let me tell you something. Stay with me here, Rad. It does not matter. One team coach, one coach, Nick Sariani, is telling his guys, 
We still where we need to be. We're leading the NFC East. We're leading the NFC Conference at 10 and 2. We're at where we want to be. All we have to do is go to Dallas and take care of our business. The other coach, Coach Mike McCarthy, is telling his team, fellas, we did what we needed to do. We beat New York. We beat the Panthers. We beat these teams that we needed to beat so we can be in position. We got a little present by, by the 49ers beating the Eagles. Now we beat the Eagles, and now we throw this thing into a tailspin. It's a three-way tie, really a four-way tie. Detroit, 49ers, Cowboys, Eagles, Cowboys on top. Because they because they will beat the Eagles and have more to uh, in conference win, uh, East wins right now, but the 49ers because they beat us, so it'll be the 49ers, the Cowboys, the Eagles. But we'll be in control out of the NFC East. So all we have to do okay. now is make sure we continue to win. Just think now, and it don't matter wh- whether you beat up. Whether you got a starter missing or two, as long as your two quarterbacks are intact, this game is on and popping. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to cling to a little bit of hope here, Nate. I'm, hey, I'm giving you the hope, man. You know? The, the yeah. hope is uh, who's going to play better, who's not going to have the yeah. big the big letdowns. Like Jimmy said, I ain't worried about big plays. That's going to happen. Just don't let them happen to you. And don't you have too many bad plays because that is what uh, will make you lose this game. All right, so let's talk about the Cowboy perspective more now. We've done a lot on the Eagles side of things. Uh, Since Mike McCarthy got to Dallas, uh, his teams are 11-2 and in the month of December, Nate. Now, that was a month that wasn't great for the Cowboys. I mean, it was back in your day. Everything was great for the Cowboys. But, (laughs) you know, there was a stretch there in the 2000s where the Cowboys couldn't do anything in December. Now they've been good. They're 11-2. and Um, You know, what? What what do we attribute that success? Because, you know, you always have the Eagles, and they've beaten the Eagles twice. Two of those 11 wins, by the way, are against the Eagles. Um, Why are they so good in December under Mike McCarthy? Better players, better understanding of how to use those players, but more importantly, these players have been healthy. Even though our offensive line, I don't think is as good as it was four or five years ago, they're playing with continuity. Coach Salari, the offensive line coach, knows how to use these guys and keeps them fresh and ready to go. And, and, and so now that is the key. You're playing with better players. You're understanding how to scheme these players to help themselves be successful. And these players are healthy enough to uh, follow, follow the game plan. All right. And one of the things we hear along those lines is like a Tyron Smith um, does not practice on certain days and has reduced reps on other days just in an effort to keep this 33 year old body healthy. Uh, So far this year, his, you know, his uh, availability has been much greater than it has in the past. Is is this working? Is this something you're in favor of? Up until this, I I would not knock things that is positive that helps a player be better. Tyron has played forever. So uh, he, he, he only thing he has to do is make sure his, uh, his, his film study has to go up a notch because he's not out there on the field running a whole lot of reps, but he's doing enough reps to stay in, 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 in timing with his left guard, which is Tyler Smith. So now this thing is working. Uh, we have to have him healthy. He is one of the better five linemen that's on our offensive lineman. He's one of those veteran guys that we need his present because Josh Sweat and uh, guys like that are going to be bringing that hammer. Graham is going to be bringing the hammer this week. So we're going to need for these guys to be on time. And what they're doing with Tyron, yeah, it's kind of out of uh, – character but sometimes when you're dealing with older players and trying to hold them together and keep them mended up that's what you need to do and coach uh, McCarthy and and Mike Solari are doing a great job of keeping him mentally prepared yeah which does nothing I mean and again you mentioned the offensive line you know Terrence Steele looks much more healthy we're getting Zach Martin as we've known and loved this future uh, Hall of Famer right I mean we're getting better play out of the offensive line and that 
has just had such a positive effect on the quarterback. Dak Prescott's playing as well as he's ever played, in my opinion, Nate, and, and again, is very firmly in the middle of the MVP conversation. You know, uh, Rad, the, uh, the, the, the accolades will always take care of themselves, especially this is what I admire and love about playing with the Cowboys. We don't have to be as great as other teams. We just have to continue to win and accolades because we are the Dallas Cowboys. We are America's team. I don't worry about accolades. They come because we are who we are. All we have to do is win. Winning will do all of that. You can have Mahomes and through for 35 touchdowns, uh, uh, 10 interceptions, 5,000 yards, and, and, and almost get to the Super Bowl. But you can get us. We can throw for 25 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, and we get to the playoffs or we get into the second round. I got to win because of who he is and who he plays for. That is the stamp. It's only a few teams in the world have that iconic look, and that is the Cowboys, the Yankees, the uh, the the uh, the uh, used to be Lakers. You know, I don't know how positive that force is now, but I knew everywhere I went in the world. If I've ever mentioned the Yankees, if I've ever mentioned the Lakers, or either the Celtics, or even the Cowboys, people perk up. And then when I really want to get people going, I say, "Hey, how about McDonald's and Harley Davidson?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, how, how long how long did it take you to realize that that I love that fact you just laid out about the Cowboys, right? That comes from the perspective of someone who is there, who's been there. How yeah. long as a player did it take you to realize cuz you came in when they weren't that great, but right. I bet it was still there. How long did it take you to realize, dang, we're America's team, we're the Cowboys, we get noticed? Yes, uh, it just it, it was from bad stuff. When we would get in a car wreck or somebody would get a DWI, this, that, uh, something happened with, you know, off the field, how it would just become a national attention. How does Stephen A's of the world, how this other guy that does this other show that no one cares to bring up his name anymore, uh, who says all the wrong things, uh, just how they got jobs and how they exploded. Now, Stephen A. was a, is a Knicks guy, so he was going to get noticed anyway. But the other guy that came from here, well, you know who I'm talking yeah. about. He yeah, I do. made his name on the Cowboys. You look at all the people that's in the media uh, that connected to Troy Aikman, Tony Romo, Michael Irvin. They're not top names in the broadcast booths. They're not top names in the shows that they do. I mean, you look at you look at you can't get enough of Troy. Uh, you know, uh, you can't. You know, Tony took over the booth. He, I mean, he got a what Jim, is it? Jim Nance? Who is the guy he talks with? Yeah, Nance. Yeah. Yep. Nance is a power. And all of a sudden, Tony goes in there and won't stop talking. And Jim Nance be like, "Yo, man, can I get a word in, Edgewise?" <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm Tony. I'm not going to shave yeah. the lower part of my neck. Hey, I'm Jim. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at how <laughs> you know Tony won't even shave when he go on TV now. I'll be like, "Come <laughs> on, Tony." <laughs> Tony, totally like hey, I ain't shaving. Tony, I'm going hey, to the to golf course. Tony got all those guys uh, much more money, too. Troy will tell you that. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony got a big contract for CBS to keep him, and it brought the money up for everybody else. It was yes. unbelievable. Yes, man. I, I love and I love the, both those guys. Troy's my quarterback forever. Yep. I think he's a great announcer, him and Buck. Him and Buck. Agreed. And I love Tony for, for, for pushing yep. the level, uh, not only financially, but he they made uh, other guys – have uh, come in and, 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 and explained more before guys would not share what Tony brought to the game is Tony made you, sh you would talk to the coaches and players before the game, but you would not share information. Yeah. Tony made everybody start sharing information. Not since John Madden, where John would say, I talked to Big Nate, I talked to Jimmy, you know, and these guys. Now, well, I talked to the coach and he said something along these lines. And I was like, I talked to the coach and the coach said this, you know, so yeah. 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 And Tony brought it to well, a new and, level. And 
what Tony did too is he would he would say what the play is going to yeah, be. Yeah, right? just going to be a run. Going to be this, right? Yeah, right. He said, but the and and everybody thought he was like a soothsayer, man. They thought, <laughs> oh my gosh, he's clairvoyant. And I'm like, I used to sit there with Big Nate and Rocket, and yeah. we watched every game. And the both of you knew. Yeah. I mean, you guys know that's your that's your life, right? Yeah. You both knew. Oh, this is what's coming next. You yeah, know? and see, Rocket. Rocky took so long to get it out, dude. He will be two plays behind. <laughs> Damn, right. Rocky, can you get it out? Rocky would have <laughs> philosophy to to why the play is being ready. He want to give the history of the play. Yeah, yeah he, was, he, he was so excited. Yeah. He's jumping on you when the Cowboys do well. Wow, oh, that was, those are some those were some fun shows. But um, all right, so more about the Cowboys now. The defense, obviously, I, I don't think they're too worried. Obviously, about not getting Shaq Leonard, they feel pretty good about the way you know they have played. But um, honestly, Nate, you and I both know. It doesn't seem to be as good, as dominant as it was at the beginning of the season, despite some theatrics, despite some really big plays from, you know, the, you know, the, the likes of Duran Bland and others. But um, is, is the defense against the Eagles in particular a concern? For, for me, uh, this is where Jack, the great Jack Slater would say, this is where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. They... The Eagles going to look at that game and say, wow. Because the Eagles have enough pride in themselves to say, wow, we just got eagle rise by the 49ers. And what I mean by that, they were more physical, run stopping, and running the ball. The Eagles are going to try to get back to running the ball. So now that brings to us, will the Cowboys hold them around 110 or less rushing? around 4.0 or less per average. Uh, the Eagles are going to be upset. Uh, now, that don't mean anything. I, I get, you know, a lot of people get upset at their kids and they, and they don't they don't, they don't don't spank them or they don't put them in time out. They still just, ah, oh, I'm mad at you. And two, weeks, two minutes later, they forget. But the Eagles ain't going to forget. They are upset because they got handled. They got manhandled. So they're going to come at us running. Our defense is going to get sorely tested. Now we will see where Jonathan Hanks, we will see where uh, Gilmore, we will see where Mozzie, uh, are they really going to stop the run? Uh, uh, is is our linebackers going to come downhill and have gaps where they can shoot and, and, and make big plays because uh, Coach Sirianni is not, going to stop running the ball because he saw how that affected his team. Uh, right about now, they, 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 are, they are what you would call butt hurt. They are mad and, and because mm-hmm. they got stopped. They got slammed to the ground. They got mishandled, and, they, and that is not a good thing. So our offense, our defense, excuse me, has to be ready. They have to be ready, Rad. All right, so you mentioned Mozzie. Uh, I'm, yeah, and it, obviously, he's getting more, a little more and more time as we go here. Um, off to a slow start, especially at the very beginning of his career. Are we only, at this point, Nate, scratching the surface of what this young man can be? Um, you know, he's such a, a rare and unique physical specimen. It, it seems like he would be more dominating, but is, it, is that just part of the process of learning at yes. this level? Yes, because I'm looking at you, Rad. I'm going to take my off this camera and I'm going to look at you. Do it. I'm looking at you. you looking at me, Rad. Are you looking at me? Yeah, I'll look, look at you. At I'm me. looking at you now. Yeah, I'm I am looking a at man. You. you are a man. I respect you as a man. You respect me as a man. And Mozzie, you just learned that you was playing against a bunch of full-grown men. These yeah. ain't sisters of the blind. When you yeah. where, where Michigan play two tough games a year, one against Wisconsin and the other against Ohio State, you are playing full grown men every week. And now yeah. you have to catch up. It's called a mental deal. It's called a mental deal. I am physically looking like a man. I walk like a man. I stand like a man. But you have to be mentally ready to be that yeah. that yeah. man. Yeah. And now he's starting to realize through the help of Coach Floyd and the help of Dan Quinn that it's up here that makes you that true man. So now is he scratching the surface? We won't know until he get there. 
We won't know until he get there. And this is the game where he can start. Yeah. So is that in a way the fact that prior to now, Nate, as a young guy in this league, he was kind of just thinking too much, right? Yes. Trying to process it all. Yes. You know, yeah. before he used to just take dudes and lift them up out their shoes and throw them in the backfield. You ain't lifting up no grown man. You ain't lifting up no dude to just throw them because he know angles. These guys will take a quick step angle. All of a sudden, you go to jam, and I'm, I'm on the side of you, and my running back running right outside of me or right inside of me, and you just standing there reaching. He, uh, you know, you just can't stick your arm out there and, and knock half of these guys off they, off they rock. And they, they, these guys are called uh, – Contact, point of a contact runners. Can, can I run after you hit me? Can I run after you push me? And that's what what we can do in the pros that a lot of college guys or average college guys can't do. Normally you stick your foot hand out there, you, you, you knock them off balance. That's hard to do in the days NFL. That's hard to do in the old school NFL. You just ain't knocking dudes off. It's called point of contact. And can I run after that? And these guys in this league can Swift is nice. But now I saw yeah. the 49ers put some hurt on Swift. So can I say this? Can curse and these guys be effective like they was two years ago? I'm not saying our safeties ain't good, but explosive like they were two years ago, we have not seen that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So let's get down to it. Um, is, is this, you know, the Cowboys are six and zero at home this year. What is it? 14 in a row. Yes. I think now at home overall. Yes. Um, is, are the Cowboys making it seven and zero? They have to, I, I tell the fans, you either buying in that these four victories are three or four victories that they, this is the fifth game. And I say they have to win six in a row. You know, you cannot lose the Seahawks game, you cannot lose the Philadelphia game. You have to win this next game because it means the world to you mentally, spiritually, and physically. You have to win in order to yourself as a player, your coaching staff as coaches and scheming, and to fans, you have to win this game because to show the world who you really are. If you lose this game, now it throws you in a tailspin. Now you're at the number five seed, but you can't lose again because that's going to throw you into the sixth or the seventh seed, and you yeah. don't know where you're going to be and who you're going to be playing. The fifth seed gives you the NFC South. Anything less gives you devastation, and it's called the Eagles or the 49ers or Detroit. Mm -hmm. And you will be going to their house. So yep. you need to win today, this Sunday, in your house. And I've always said, and you will always hear me say this, and I've grained and grained this into the Newton residence. Even my wife knows this now. <laughs> Take care of your house. Get the log out of your eye before you try to deal with the stone in your sister's or your brother's house. If you don't never get this log out of your house, it'll set you a fire, Rad. It'll set yep. you a fire. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. That is, uh, that is awesome thoughts on this game. And now you know I'm a baseball guy, Nate. I'm going to throw you a curveball. Okay, throw me one. I'm going to ask you about the end-season tournament in the NBA. Have I, you been paying attention to it at all? My cell just got beat by... Indiana the other night. I don't know where this place is us because I just briefly listen. I'm like, I am so tired of my Celtics being the Dallas. It's like everybody I'm connected to act like the Dallas Cowboys. In the biggest and biggest of games, you cannot show up. I got a top 10 player. We just played Jalen Brown more money than God. Well, I not yep. no more money than God. God owns all the money. But we just yeah, gave this dude, we just backed up the truck, and Fort Knox took a hit in the stock market drop, uh, drop when we paid <laughs> Salem Brown. And this, and you can't even show up, man. You let yeah. this holler yeah. burden of whoever this kid is down there just Boy, outscore your whole India, team. Yeah. Come yeah. on, man. Come on, yeah. man. Come on, man. Hey, Niagara hey, flush my boss is Celtics, will you? <laughs> 
I'm going to tell you something uh, too. You mentioned the Lakers earlier, and they, they, uh, they you know, they, they aren't what the, they won. They, they won last night. They yes. beat the Suns last night. Yes. So it's the it's the Lakers against the Pelicans, and then uh, the Pacers. Who's that other team? The Pacers are playing over here. Ooh, Ray oh, yeah, the some glasses. Yeah, and the Bucks. Yeah, with uh, Antico. Ray, what did you yeah. just put on? <laughs> I had to put a little pair of readers on. They just a small screen, man. <laughs> How do I look? You look studious. A lot, of, a lot of guys wear them like this. Oh, I don't can't do, do that, that. Rad. Don't do No, I, I look too old. Yeah, I look too old. Well, all right, oh. Nate, man, this has been fantastic as hey, always. Man. I love it when you lean in the camera and say, let me tell you something. I love getting your insights on the Cowboys. I hope people are enjoying it as much as we do. And I know this. Man, that game on Sunday night is going to be a lot of fun. It is, man. I just dropped coffee and everything over everything. I got to go. I got to go. Bye. 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 All right. Bye. All right. All right. Thank you, Niagara. We'll see you next week. Thank you. I got to go. I dropped some coffee. Wow.